appreciation. This is the twins coming at y'all with more WNBA game chat. This is for the hookups. Where the hookups at? Much love and appreciation to y'all. New viewers, returning viewers. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, keeping up, following with Wow Wow. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, especially if you fuck with WNBA, women's basketball, all that good shit. This is the channel where we do that chat at, you feel me? So, year of the Mama Citas, 2024, what a season. We are here in the playoffs. Now we're on the finals. <laughs> we're in the finals, game three, Minnesota Lynx and New York Liberty. We did game one and game two, so y'all go check that out. Let's talk about game three while we're here, though. The whole reason why we're here. We're talking about game three. Start off just saying congratulations again, New York. Congratulations again. Minnesota, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Gotta hit the blunt real quick, man. I'm just gotta hit my What? Minnesota, though, y'all was in control the whole game. The whole game, y'all was in control. And <clears throat> watching this game, <clears throat> I really did not see the pattern until they brought it up. You know, Minnesota Lynx would start the quarter off doing well, taking over. And then, like, the last couple minutes of the quarter, New York coming and starts going on a run. Now, the thing that was tripping, huh? What quarter are we talking about? All of them. That's that's the thing that tripped me out. The first quarter they went on a they went on a run at the end, but they didn't. The thing was that their runs didn't really bring an impact. Like they would go on a run, but they would still be down. You know what I mean? So the thing was, like in the third quarter, that's when it bit them. Or the fourth quarter, I think. I think it was the fourth quarter. I think it was the fourth quarter. Yeah, the fourth quarter. Because in that third quarter, they went on an 8-0 run in the last two minutes. And that's when they brought up that pattern. Like, if y'all notice, second quarter and the first quarter towards the end, New York is always going on a run. I'm just like, damn, I didn't even notice that. And that's because Minnesota Lynx has been doing a good job keeping the lead. They didn't get that lead until the fourth. Minnesota Lynx has been in control the whole game. So... When they when they brought that up, I was just thinking to myself, like, damn, I didn't even notice that. And that's only because Minnesota Lynx just had the lead. So when they finally got the lead, I was like, damn, this shit finally, like, caught up in a way. I don't know how to say it other than, like, I guess the I guess it just caught up. But it it shouldn't have it shouldn't have gone that way in the first place. Shouldn't have gone that way. You know, like I said, Minnesota Lynx is in control the whole game. They, man, they, they got to knock shots down. They got to knock your shots down. Play smart. Take care of the ball. I know New York was turning the ball over, but it seems like y'all turnovers seem to be worse only because y'all lost. And I think New York had more turnovers. You know, you know, Minnesota needed, Minnesota should have won that. They should have won that. They should have won that game. Nafisa had 22. Kayla McBride had 19. Carlton had 14, which was very, very good to see. Courtney Williams had 12. Maisha Hines Allen. You know, Natisha Heideman. 20. And... What? Twin. What? Kill all that stats, stats, man. I'm just running. Through. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and start talking my opinion real quick, man, because I ain't been speaking all video. I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna go ahead and speak my spiel on my on the how I feel about the game. A lot of things I agree with you. Minnesota should have won this game. The way y'all played and the way y'all came out, y'all definitely should have won. Here's the thing that made me mad at Minnesota Lynx and mad watching the game. Y'all let Brianna Stewart literally single-handedly destroy y'all all third quarter. 
the whole third quarter. Y'all single, Brianna Stewart single handedly just showed it. Like the announcer said, watching the game. I don't know if y'all watched. The announcer said, watching the game. Brianna Stewart is showing why she is the best player in the W to ever put a basketball in her hand. She literally took that third quarter and said, I'm about to make this shit mine. I didn't see nobody else participate in that third quarter but Brianna Stewart. Taking over the whole third, destroying every single Lynx player. That right there is where it kicked off for me where I was just like, y'all don't let her single-handedly take over the whole third and bring the game back, or I think they tied the game up in the end of third. Moving on to the fourth quarter. Is she still doing Brianna Stewart shit? She's still doing Brianna Stewart. Now we're playing five on one. Now we're playing five on one. Everybody's playing like a team on Minnesota, but now we still got to stop Brianna Stewart because now she hot like a motherfucking devil's fucking cave. Minnesota Lynx start going on the run. They start doing their thing. Cool. Woo wah wah. Next thing you know, here come New York. They start giving their little dibbles and dabbles. All right, whatever. Cool. Y'all have to understand a game awareness of clock, situational shit, because this is where it started to get salty for y'all. Shit, players. Turnovers. Right. Bad passes. Right. Missed shots. Right. Them right. three things is what hurt y'all. <laughs> Same thing I said in game two on why y'all lost. Turnovers, missed shots, and what I say? Turnovers, missed shots, not passing the ball, oh, you did say one or more, something like that. You did say one more thing. It was it was definitely uh, make shots, pass the ball, make shots, uh, miss turnovers. Sh- I don't want to think too too deep on it, but you did say another thing. I'll go ahead and just say those and say that y'all y'all go ahead and rewind it back for me, so y'all know. But at the end of the day, it's the same thing I said at game two on why Minnesota Lynx lost. And that little spare time of the fourth quarter showed exactly the same results of game two on why y'all lost. Game three. And it was just only through the fourth versus the whole game of game two. Y'all did that. Y'all did that throughout the whole game of game two. In game three, y'all only did it in the fourth quarter. And in that fourth quarter, it hurt so much that y'all lost. I personally thought y'all about to go to overtime. Right. But here we go. We in the fourth quarter, we tied. All right. I'm over here laughing like, if I think I know what's going to happen, this is about to be crazy. I had two outcomes. Either we was going to steal the ball and go down for a shot, or we was going to steal the ball and get a foul, and now it's going to be the game. Or the other one was, he going to bust a shot, and that's going to be the game. Ended up being result number two. They ended up busting the shot, and they ended up winning the game. But who ended up shooting the shot and making it, though? Sabrina. Sabrina fucking Inescu, out of all players. That was fucking... I had to laugh so hard on this game because y'all let the one player that was hardly even doing anything. Yeah, she scored. She did her thing. But it was Brianna Stewart. I was expecting Brianna Stewart. But the fact that it was Sabrina and the fact that she shot it from that fucking deep. I'm not surprised that she made it because that's some Sabrina Anescu range. I'm not surprised. But her gameplay was not there consistently throughout the get throughout the game. So for her to come in and make that shot. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. I mean Amazing. Can't believe she really just pulled this shit off. Before Sabrina shot, really looking like she a motherfucking dog for real. Before the shot, she um went on a little run herself. Started to get turned up, started to find her rhythm, started to get juice. You know, I remember she made a she made a three pointer on the wing, and uh they called a timeout. And then she on the bench, she turned up, telling her teammates, you know, let's go. She like it's all up here, like let's go. So. Before that game win, it was the end. But I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, for her to make that shot, it was like, well, damn. Like, if they was only trying to slow her down, I mean, if they kept slowing her down through the whole game, 
Because, like I said, before right. she before she took that shot to win the game, she was already turning up a little bit. They was coming back. She was helping. She was producing. And she was getting turned up like, all right, we about to do this. And I'm part of it. You know, she's scoring. She in the plays. So, I mean, Sabrina had a – she had – she had built that energy. She had built that that readiness. She was ready to. And I'm not. Can't, as I was watching the game, I can tell that she kept trying to find her rhythm and her for and sure. her emotion in the game. And for it sure. wasn't consistent. Like I said, it wasn't consistent throughout the game. I'm not saying she wasn't scoring. I'm not saying she wasn't doing her thing. It just wasn't a consistent thing. But the fact that it was getting there towards the end and it helped get them to win, it was just like, yeah. If only y'all would have just kept on slowing her down. Exactly. Got to play through the whole game. Got to play through the whole game, man, because, <clears throat> again, Minnesota should have won this game. They carried the lead throughout the whole game into the last couple minutes of the fourth. The last couple minutes of the fourth literally, like you said, it condensed everything game two was. Like, them last two minutes, y'all turned the ball over, missed shots. Y'all wasn't dialed in. Like, I don't know what was going on, but for them last two minutes to hurt y'all compared to a whole game in game two, it's making me a little worried, Minnesota. Because now it just seems like this is what's going to be y'all kryptonite. When y'all not making shots and y'all turn the ball over, that's when New York Liberty can capitalize on that. Because when they start making shots... And when they don't turn the ball over and run in transition, that's when they find their rhythm. They're not a strong defensive team. Like you said, they get their moments. They get their, you know, they get height. They get, you know, they get in the zone when they shoot threes, you know, <laughs> offensive. They motion transition. They, they running in, yeah. when they're running. Run. Yes, yes. When they running up and <laughs> down that court, yes. Offensive. Yeah, that's they get. Yeah, they get. They run off the height, and that's why I say New York is a height clout team because they play off the height. They play off the crowd. They play off little moments and shit like that, which is cool. It's fine, but collectively, they're not a unified team. It's not a collective unified. So, like I said, you you see how Brianna Stewart literally just took over the whole fucking third quarter, and you got all these pieces together, but they're not collectively here, right? So one player is literally doing everything for the team. When you, and it's okay. Right. It's, it, they had their moments. Right. But it just, awareness, it just goes to show for me as a viewer, it's just like, like I said, y'all let Brianna Stewart single-handedly destroy y'all and it's five against one. Like, are y'all that terrible? Is she that good? Like, y'all really need to get y'all, get it together. Minnesota Lynx is definitely the better overall, better team. Because everybody was producing, everybody showed up, and they, again, they, they kept the lead the whole game until Brianna Stewart comes <clears throat> third quarter and starts taking over. One person. And in the midst of all that, Minnesota Lynx is still doing what Minnesota Lynx do, sharing the ball, running their offense, and everybody's getting involved. Everybody's having an opportunity to take their shots. Like I said, Bridget Carlton went out for 14, even though they lost. It's just like, that's the type of shit we need. But then you got Elena Smith, who had foul trouble, so she couldn't really produce. She only had like two points, I think. And I think it was somebody else who was somebody we looked forward to scoring that wasn't scoring. So make shots. Don't turn the ball over. And, of course, foul troubles. But take advantage of the opportunities. That was the third thing I said. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Turnovers and taking advantage of your opportunities. That was the third thing, taking advantage of the opportunities. And them opportunities. Ah. And speaking of opportunities, what's crazy was they did in a way, when you look at the stats compared, because on the um, turnovers, points off turnovers, Minnesota Minnesota had like 14, 14 points off of turnovers. And New York had like six. So with all that going on, like you said, man, like, Y'all let one person take over, and it, it killed the whole game. And that was just based off, and it wasn't even at home. That's even more fucked up. So the hype really was just in them. 
Everything yeah. was in them. It was like they didn't need their crowd. They didn't need to be at home to get the job done, which is good, as you know. But still, <laughs> though, as Minnesota links to be at home, they should have won that motherfucking game. They should have took care of the crib. They held it down the whole game until them lad to that last quarter, the last couple minutes, <clears throat> and it was just like, I right, for real, like I know Brianna Stewart took over the third quarter, but the fourth quarter, like, come on now, come on now. We had we should have found ourselves in a position where they had to foul us. I don't care if we were up by one or two. We should have. They should have been in position. Where they had the foul Minnesota Lynx to go to the free throw line and get opportunities based on making sure the clock can work in their favor. Because other than that, Minnesota Lynx, to go out like that, it's a little heartbreaking. That's sad. It's sad. Sad. It's sad. Sad. And, and now, y'all disappointed, man. I'm just like, I, I, I can't believe y'all went out like that. Y'all let that happen. And y'all let that happen. And now. All they got, and now New York Liberty's got to win one more game, and they back in Minnesota. So, I hope Minnesota come with it. I hope Minnesota come with it. You better get a win at home. They better win at home. Or I'm gonna be mad as hell. I'm be mad as hell. I don't want to see New York win this championship. So take this shit to Game Five and win it there, and win it at their home turf. Minnesota, and I agree with you, bro. Minnesota Lynx is a better team. Better program, better coach. They are overall better. I hope as a program, as a team, organization and all, the players do not give up on themselves. And I and I don't think they're the type of team to do so. I just want to put no. that out there because I know they can do it. I know as a unit, it's going to show this is why they won the championship. The better team came out and won. It's a lot of leadership on this team. You got Elena Smith, that's a leadership. You got Nafisa Collier, that's a leadership. You got Courtney Williams, well, Kayla McBride. It's a lot of leadership on this team that all it takes is for one person to the lead to the next person to the lead to the next person to lead to the next person. You say everybody is a lead. everybody is a leader on this team. Nobody is a follow. At least I can say for the starting five: Elena, Nafisa, Courtney, McBride. Them four, I can at least say, are leaders. And with them four leaders alone, y'all can uplift a whole. Y'all can uplift the whole team, let alone yourselves, to where y'all can get the job done. They only got Brianna Stewart when she's up. They only got Sabrina when she's up. They only got John Quill when she's up. True that. They gotta slow them down. They gotta. They gotta. They gotta hold it. They gotta hold, slow them down. Hold their ground the whole game. And produce yeah. on offense and take care of the ball. Game four, they got to come with it. They got to win game four, obviously. Obviously, they got no choice but to win game four. You're going to yeah. see what happens, man. They got no choice now but to win the next two games. For real. You ain't got no choice now but to win the next two games. Minnesota Lakes fans, no, no choice but to win the next two games. New York Liberty fans, all you need is one. All you need is one. What is going to happen in game four, man? Be game four. Whether it's going to be Friday or it's going to be on Sunday. All y'all need is one. Minnesota League fans, as I, we got to get together. We got to pray for our team. Make sure that they come out with this final championship. You got to stop the New York Liberty from winning this championship. For real. For real. You got to stop them. <clears throat> Y'all can do stop. it. Minnesota Lynx can do it, man. They are, man, I strongly believe they are just a better overall team. And I got to believe in yourselves and know that y'all can get this job done. Ain't nothing hard. Y'all can get it done. Y'all built for this. Y'all made for this. Y'all wouldn't have come this far if it wasn't possible, if it wasn't meant to be. Come on now. This is meant to be. This is meant to be to show how strong of a team that y'all can fight through to win these next two games. Show the world that championship franchise. Show the world that championship franchise. Y'all here, make it happen. That's right. Congratulations, New York. Twins, we up out of here. Y'all stay tuned to the next. Peace. Peace.